hours, 1,000 passes, and 14 hours to find one ultimate champion. I'm Rich Christensen, and this is Pink's All Out. Let's race. Here we go. This week on Pink's All Out. Oh, you got Rich Chris? Christensen. Hey. If you do not rerun that car, I will never watch your show again, and I will tell everybody, never watch your show. What you're telling me is I got to run the show the way that you want to. No, it's not the way I want. That he is moved. the right thing to no, do. No, he, he didn't. moved. No. He moved. That's the way my rules have always been. He didn't move, though. He, he didn't move. move. Guys, if it was you close. You moved him up a little, Rich. What? I think you're doing the wrong thing. No. no. I'm not the only one who's saying it. No. I don't do that. I know exactly how I start cars. I think you need to line both cars up and do it the he right moved. way. Be fair about it. He moved. Pink's All Out's relentless pursuit to immortalize the best grassroots racers in America has taken Rich and team up north for a return visit Woo! to one of drag racing's hidden gems, Maple Grove Raceway, smack dab in the middle of the wooded serenity of Moton, Pennsylvania. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Maple Grove and welcome to Pink's All Out. Are we ready to go? We have one rule today, race your cars. And standing by, ready to enforce Rich's rules, is the Pink's All Out crew. If you have a problem, if you have a question, you can ask any three of these guys. Timing and scoring ref Brian Bassone takes control of the Maple Grove Raceway Tower. Left line all the way, Rich. Fellow grassroots racer and radio host Willie B takes a close look at the competition. I got an identical twin. He's racing Malibu. We've been going against each other for years and years and years. These things make wicked little race cars. While race car builder and pairings chief Ken Herring spots a familiar face in the pits. Seventh all out. Seventh all out. How's it luck been so far? Oh, it's great, man. It's always fun. They are your court of appeal, but I'm the judge. If you deep stage, I'll disqualify you. And every racer at Maple Grove had best be prepared to face judgment if they want their shot at some serious winnings. The racers who make it into the All Out 16 net a prize package from Wix filters valued at $550. If they survive to the All Out 8, they'll clear $500 cash. Those who stay alive to the All Out 4 draw in $750. The last two racers will each harvest $1,000. And the sole winner of the All Out Final will reap the grand prize of $10,000 cash. All told, it's a pile of loot worth $25,000, the most in Pink's All Out history. This is your Olympics. This is your Super Bowl. This is your day to shine. Given its secluded forested surroundings, it's tucked away, so it's, it's more private. Better Google it, so to speak, or have a GPS. Yeah, this is a hard track to find. The Pennsylvania locals who flock to Maple Grove Raceway prove you can be both green. I think the scenery is just fantastic. It's not all concrete. There are a lot of trees. You can sit in the shade, look at all the cars. The scenery coming here is beautiful. And mean. This is Maple Grove. It's been a track champion many years. If you can do good or you can win here, you're saying something, because it's a tough track. Nearly 500 hopefuls caravan to the track. But to earn a shot at some real money, Rich throws every single racer into the grinder of two back-to-back -back qualifying rounds. Round one pits the racers against the automated tree, which flips to green in less time than it takes to blink. It's my first time on a pro tree officially, so I'm pretty excited about that. Racers move on to round two, facing down the human element of Rich's unpredictable arm drop. Concentrate, especially on his arm drop. Just watch his shoulders. It doesn't take long before the brutalizing pace proves too much for many of the cars. Let's see how bad the damage is. One car after another breaks down, spraying oil up and down the track and bringing the races to a grinding halt. Hey, we apologize for being so late. We just had a lot of breakdowns today, folks. A lot of breakdowns. Every time there's a oil down, they got it cleaned up. Two and a half hours behind, the final race of the qualifying rounds finally crosses the finish line. This day had more breakdowns than in our history. It's, just, it's been a rough day already. 
Having lost so much time, Rich orders the drivers to stand by their cars for the announcement of who'll get to race in the 32-car runoff. The times are crunched, and a leading class emerges with one of the slimmest spreads the team has ever seen. And one class of 32 is separated by 0.17. And the class of car to score that statistically dead even spread is the sleek and supercharged speed demons of the 9-9s. Congratulations, High Nine. The following cars report to the staging lanes immediately. Car number four, yeah. you're moving on. Car 24, car 171, car 51, car number three. The closest 32 cars are chosen for the first real race of the day, the 32-car runoff. An all-or-nothing, foot-to-the-floor motorized melee to determine who's moving on to the Wix Filters all-out 16. I can't wait. I'm going to have a blast. Love it. I love this. <laughs> it's the most exciting thing ever happened to me in drag racing. Winning car right here, buddy, because when he wins that 10,000, he's taking me out for steak. Pigs all out! Woo! <laughs> In a field this tight, the tiniest error results in a colossal failure. And for the first 12 races, the way these drivers go at it, there's little doubt they don't know it. Oh! Yeah! 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 All right! Let's see the burnouts, boys. Come on! It's race 13. And in the right lane, Jack Geisler may be nudging his 68 Camaro a little too far forward. Right lane! Yeah. Just two spots. Rich, you get that? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, hey, Willie, Willie, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was a jump. So he rolled in deep and turned both bulbs off. All right, what do we got? He rolled the beams. He rolled the beams, so that means he's a squad. He was way deep stage. Yeah. He's deep stage, yeah, he both rolled bulbs the beams. Were off. So what you're saying, you're making a call? He's out, he's DQ'd? Both bulbs were off. Just tell me, yes or no. Coming up, one racer veers dangerously out of the groove. And later, it may be lights out for one racer. Technically, it means he jumped. Pink's All Out is at historic Maple Grove Raceway, nestled in the forested countryside of southeastern Pennsylvania. It's race 13 of the 32-car runoff, when in the right lane, Ken Herring spots a potential problem with racer Jack Geisler's launch. He rolled the beams. So what you're saying, you're making a call, he's out, he's DQ'd? Both bulbs were off. Just tell me, yes or no? That's you, big dog. All right, the right lane is gone. Brian, the left lane is moving on. It's not a clean race unless both cars are perfectly lined up at the start. The two sets of yellow bulbs above and behind Rich's shoulders light up when the cars are exactly where they need to be. If even one set of lights goes out, that means the car has moved too far forward, what's known in the sport as rolling the beams or deep staging, which by Pink's All Out rules is cause for disqualification. He's saying I rolled the beams. I'm saying I waited until his arm moved, but he's got the final say, so, you know. Here's the expression, TDR, that's drag racing. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Rich blazes through the last three races of the 32-car runoff. The final spots are filled, and out of the hundreds who journeyed to Maple Grove Raceway, only 16 Supreme Speedsters are left in the running. I won. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Hopefully I'm in it to win it now. It's just unbelievable. Never thought I'd be here. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to your Pink's All Out 16. Give it up, folks. Congratulations. Right now, you're standing with your Wix box. It has a decal, it has a t-shirt, it has a hat, but inside is a $550 coupon redeemable online for you to get Wix filters and whatever things else you want to get, OK? And I got to ask, did you run your cars all out? Yes. Yeah, you did. You went through a day of delays and breakdowns. You kept your composure. When it really mattered, you ended up standing here. Point. One seven separates the slowest from the fastest of U16. In other words, you're dead even. There's 15,000 Maple Grove maniacs 
I hope you're ready to race your hearts out for them. So gentlemen, get to your cars and let's race. The drivers bolt back to their cars and focus in for the all-out 16. Barely a tenth of a second is all that separates them. So there's only one way to win their spot in the all-out eight and $500 cash. Race clean, race perfect, and don't be caught napping when Rich drops those arms. So Willie, who do we have coming up? His name is George. This is the guy that's tried to be on Pinks seven times. I love it, you know, it's a lot of fun. You know, a lot of family fun. In this lane, we have a 1968 Roadrunner. Paid 700 bucks for this car 23 years ago. This is what every grassroots racer wants to do. Be on TV, win 10 grand, and have a blast doing it. Jump on him, didn't see him the whole way down. Doing my job, but you gotta be in it to win it. To get this far is, is great. We can't ask for anything more. All right, Willie. All right, in the left lane, it's gonna be James Taylor. When he was in high school, his mom said, I'm gonna give you $500 to put down on a car. Found out that it was a hot rod. She said no. 30 years later, he's racing his dream car on his dream show. Tomorrow, I'm gonna think, yeah, I'm glad I was part of that. Win, lose, or draw. In this lane, Mike Haynes. He's running a 1972 Vega wagon. He just put this car together four days ago. He Took it for a ride the first time Wednesday night. Thursday morning, loaded on the trailer and brought it here. Come on, baby! Rock it! Oh. Go! separated those cars. I think my odds are pretty good to go all the way with this. We'll see what happens. I think if I went for second just a little bit quicker, I might have had him because he started pulling ahead to go for third, and I started gaining on him. It was close. All right, Willie, what do we got here, buddy? In this left lane right here, you're going to love this. He just called his buddy and said, hey, I'm racing your car at pink. He's like, I hope to see you on television. This here ranks on the top because this is the most money I've ever raced for. In this lane, Jason Winchester. Favorite part about this car is doing big time wheelies in it, Rich. You gotta keep your wits about you and keep cool on the line. That's all, that's all there is to it. Right lane. Oh. Oh. I like that wheel stand. Ken, gotta admit that was pretty cool. I don't know. I just got him off the line, and from there on out, I never saw him. I thought it shifted too soon. I knew it was over, because he pulled right up alongside of me, and I was pretty uh, disappointed. Willie, who do we got? All right, we have Joe in the left lane in the 1991 Mustang. Nasty small block motor right here. It went from my daily driver to a race car. You know how things just kind of escalate. In this lane, Eddie Brooks right here in the 1982 Chevy Camaro. He just got back into racing four years ago. Actually get into the field, get past the first 32. I'm, I'm all up for this. Yes! I believe I treat him quite well, because I didn't see him the whole way down the track. I didn't want to jump on Rich, but I wanted to go as soon as he flinched, but I saw the other guy left first, so and I couldn't chase him down. Willie, who do we got? Rich in this lane, Lynn. Unberger, the reason he built this car, he said, everybody's got a Mustang. I'm going to buy a Mercury Comet. I work in a machine shop making uh, G-Force transmissions and long shifters. Rich in this lane, Jeff Kidd in a 1974 Vega. Built it exactly like the one he had in high school. You got to step it up, though. You got to play low, you know? You got to put that game face on and make it look like you're a sleeper. 9-100, separate these cars. I'm 
out of the groove. Coming up, a disqualification sparks a potential riot. Line both these cars up and rerun them again. And later, oh my God, a Pink's All Out final unlike any in history. Panasonic failure and a jump on the arm drop. Pink's All Out is at Maple Grove Raceway. It's the middle of race five at the Wix Filters All Out 16. And in the left lane, Lynn Umberger's 75 Comet slides out of control. Oh! The Comet got out of the groove a little bit. It probably cost him the race. Just get more and more pumped up, ready to go. Go for the next round. Well, it wasn't too bad uh, until about after half track. The car started pushing over to the center line. I had a lift. All right, in this lane, Tracy Rogers in the 1968 Dodge Dart. True grass boost racer says if he wins the money, all the money goes back into the car. It's a 68 Dodge Dart, small block, stroke to 416. In this lane, Steve, on his tailgate, you're going to love this race. It says, run your car not your mouth. It's a 92 S10, small tire truck, Andy Gentle motor in it. Here we go! Concentrated on Rich's shoulders. Now, obviously, it was good enough because I definitely knew I had him from the start and kept it that way all the way down. Love the sticker. That's very creative, very ingenious. So I'm just glad you were on the show and hope you had a great time, Thank pal. You. Willie, talk to me. All right, Eric rode a 1989 Mustang and he's running a five speed in it. A little stick shift car. Try and hit it hard. Yeah, you know, go as fast as we can. <laughs> In this lane, Will Fox in a 1992 Mustang. Says he lost a couple girlfriends over this car, but he gained one tonight. I've been on pinks one time, but they didn't pick my class. And that is the best thing until now. I mean, as good as this car is going to run. I had him out of the gate, but once I got out of the groove and from that big wheelie, he was already next to me and going by. Always next time. Tell me who's going for that final spot. Mike, he worked at a Datsun dealership for 30 plus years of his life. A few years ago, he got this one, started putting it together. Now he's racing in the biggest race of his life, Pink's All Out. Oh, I'm happy to be here. If I, if, if I lose, I lose, but I'm sure as hell going give to give it a good shot. In this lane, Chris which is some tough competition. A 65 Plymouth Belvedere. Says his favorite part of this car is grabbing second gear while the bumper is still in the air. I jetted this thing perfect for this air. I knew what was gonna happen if I got into it. So now it's gonna run better and better. Hold on, hold on. First light came off. Means, technically, it means he jumped. No! Coming up, angry fans hold the races hostage. If you do not rerun that car, I will never watch your show again, and I will tell everybody, never watch your show. And later, one racer slides out of the groove and into serious whoa, trouble. Whoa. Pink's All Out is at Maple Grove Raceway, deep in the woodlands of southeast Pennsylvania. It's the final race of the Wix Filters All Out 16, and in the left lane, 
Mike Gross, 73 Dotson, may have gotten off to a little too good of a start. Hold on, folks, hold on, hold on. First light came up. Means, technically, it means he jumped. You calling it a jump? To justify the other guy that we wouldn't let in earlier, I think you got to call that a jump. He pushed through the beam. The first light was off. Ryan, what do you think? He rolled the beams. Ryan's saying it's bad. That race is eliminated. The other lane is moving on. Mike, I just thought you were just going to keep on driving. Just I ain't talking to that guy. Hey, listen, here's how it went. This is how it went down. I eliminated a competitor earlier today for doing the exact same thing that you did. I saw the whole thing. I, I was watching that bulb and I said it went out, but I just ran my race and just did what I had to do and the outcome came out the right way, I thought. You win with class, you lose with class, and I can tell everybody here tonight, this is one class act, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Oh, I thought I won until the people in the stands, when I stopped over there, said, boy, you got ripped off. Nearly 500 racers have been whittled down to an elite group of eight, all focusing in on one thing, making it to the all-out four and making themselves $750 richer. At the pairings board, Ken has a plan to make sure only the best of the best of the eight survivors move on to the all-out four. Let's give every brand an equal shot at this deal. Okay. So let's pair brands together. Mustang to Mustang. Let's eliminate a Mustang right off. We're doing an all-brand against all-brand. Yeah. So we yeah. paired you with another Mustang. The no Mustang. Mustang. No way. Doesn't and matter what you're running, does I it? I don't care what I want. He said, I don't care what I want. One, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't mind loading up your own brand? No way, man. <laughs> Just another guy in the other lane. <laughs> Eric and Jason, congratulations for making it to the Pink's All Out 8. We reward you with $500 oh, and your opportunity you. to make it to the Pink's All Out 4. All right, Eric, what are you doing that's making it possible for you to continue to win? Well, I just keep trying to hit your arms, you know. I got to leave on your arm drop, and the car is going to really do the rest. Jason, tell me about your car and how it's holding up through these rounds so far today. It's not overheating. It's been running well, very consistent today. Shake hands, boys, and let's Thank race. Staying calm, play my game, and guys, I'll win. Right. See the birdhouse, boys. Let's bring them up, guys. Young Jason Winchester's finely tuned 650 horsepower 91 Mustang is out to show Eric Strom's 89 Dark Block LX. There's only enough room on this racetrack for one untamed stallion. Here we go. came within two feet of that wall. Final four, I can't believe it. I had him off the line again and never saw him. Seeing the wall was real awful close, so I thought, ah, better bail and, and save the car, save everybody the grief. You know? Ken and Willie B pair up the second race of the All Out 8, two old school heavyweight 68 Mopars. All right, 17, the Roadrunner. 17, 68, Roadrunner. Uh -huh. And let's run him against the dark, 140. I know you got a wicked little Mopar here. We're gonna put you against another Mopar. I saw you switch the cards. <laughs> yeah. You gotta play the cards, that's it. It's fair, right? All you gotta fair? do is put him on the trailer. I hate to do it to another Mopar, but I dude, I need the money, man. Don and Tracy, congratulations for making it this far. How about $500 for your troubles? Sounds good to me. All right, good job, All Tracy. Right, Listen, like Trace, tell me what you plan on doing on taking out a fellow Mopar racer. Uh, it's gonna be hard, but I gotta do it. Don, you've been racing great all day. Your car's awesome. What are you going to do to take out Trace, a fellow Mopar guy? Doing my job. Watch you. You move, I move. Shake hands, boys, and let's race. Focus. Representing the big blocks, all right? I like you stole it. It's time, man. Unfortunately, you're going against another Mopar. Yeah. How you feeling? I'm nervous. Let's see the burnout. Donald Schilt's big block Mopar muscled 68 Roadrunner is chopping at the bit to squash Tracy Rogers' smaller but faster 68 Dodge Dart for a spot in the all-out four and $750 cash. Oh, yeah! 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 Credit 
Peter moves on. Left, never saw him. I got to get my peripheral vision checked. Oh, uh, he had me on the tree. I was pulling him down, but I didn't have enough. Back at the pairings board, Willie B and Ken match up the two Chevys for the third race in the all-out eight. All right, now let's have us a Chevrolet shootout. Let's yeah. do the Camaro and the Vega. And Vega driving Jeff Kidd has his work cut out for him because he's about to face the 2010 NHRA Z-Max four-wide super street champion, Eddie Brooks. We're giving every brand an opportunity to win tonight. We put two Mopars together. We put two Fords together. You being the Chevy guy in the house, we stacked you against another Chevy. I don't care who I beat. All right, it's as long <laughs> as you beat him, right? That's right. Your competitor's right next to you. OK, yep. Doesn't matter, does it? Nah, there's nothing, there's nothing <laughs> to worry about. Eddie and Jeff, congratulations. Here's $500. Thank you. Now it's time for the Chevys to compete to see who can make it to the All Out Four. Race hard, shake hands, good luck, and let's race. You got a mean competitor over there. Yeah, I know, he's tough. He's won some big races. How does that make you feel? Yeah, it just makes the winning that much sweeter. <laughs> With only two spots left in the All Out Four, Jeff Kidd's 550 horsepower 74 Vega is out to trample fast Eddie Brooks Super Street Champion 82 Camaro. They're separated by seven one hundredths of a second. Yes! 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 Car's doing its job. I'm doing my job, and we're going to take this whole thing, I think. I thought I had him off the line, but yeah. yeah, I just ran out of track, man. He had a little more power than I had, and on the big end, he got around me. Ken and Willie B pair up the final race of the All Out Eight. Torino and the Belvedere. That's going to be a Which good race. Which would be two good-looking cars, man. two good races. But back in the pits, disqualified racer Mike Groff and his crew are refusing to concede defeat. I guess Brian's the one that said that that I moved or whatever I did. It was the last race of the All Out 16. And from his vantage point in the tower, Brian Basson clearly spotted the top bulb going out, which means Mike Groff moved. Both lights were on. None of them went off. And Mike's crew members aren't the only ones who saw it that way. A supportive fan rallies to Mike's defense. I'm just, I'm just a, a fellow racer that comes here all the time to see the man get robbed out of his just due. He should still be out there. It's an unfair decision, that's all I'm going to tell you and the defiant chorus starts to grow. All out eight quarter finalists, Chris Baum and James Taylor go to meet Rich for their moment in the pinks all out circle. But Mike Groff and his posse storm the starting line. Oh, we got Rich Christensen. Hey. If you do not rerun that car, I will never watch your show again. And I will tell everybody, never watch your show. Coming up. I think you're doing the wrong thing. Rich feels the heat. Two more. And later, it's a Pink's All Out final that must be seen to be believed. We're going to do, Rich. Pink's All Out is at Maple Grove Raceway. And late in the night, a dispute over a disqualified racer slams the brakes on the competition. Oh, we got Rich, Rich Christensen. Hey. If you do not rerun that car, I will never watch your show again. And I will tell everybody, never watch your show. What you're telling me is I got to run the show the way that you want to. No, it's not the way I want. That he is moved. the right thing to no, do. No, he, he moved. Didn't. No, he moved. I watched the I don't run listen. He moved. He run it. Is this, is this how you want to, your team to bring it down? No, you're the driver of the call. You, you decide how these guys get them in my face. Mike Groff was DQ'd after Rich and the crew caught him deep staging in the All Out 16. The lights did go out. Guys, if it was close. Move them up a little, Rich, even. What? I think you need to line both cars up and do it the Ooh. right way. Be fair about it. I think, I think you're doing the wrong thing. Top light was out. What you did was you just took a great moment from these two racers. Because I think they earned the right to, to race. He earned the right to. He earned the right to. He's been here all day. What did I tell you when I said goodbye, Mike? What did I tell you when I said goodbye? You win with class, you lose with class. 
They're going home. Mike and his supporters got their chance to plead their case. But if you race at pinks, you play by Rich's rules. Rich states clearly at the driver's meeting. If you deep stage, I'll disqualify you. At pinks all out, you move, you lose. And that's it. Listen, I want to apologize for that moment being taken away from you guys. You've raced hard all day, but you know the passion in racers. I can't even blame those guys for being that passionate. In fact, I applaud them for being that passionate. Problem was, he moved. So James, don't let that take away from what you've accomplished today. And Chris, do not let that take away from your moment. Shake hands, boys, and let's race. Do everything right and let the car do the rest of it. Look at me tell me you're focused. You ready to do this? I'm very focused. Chris and James Taylor for one final stop. James Taylor's classic 429 cubic inch Ford Torino has Chris Baum's mammoth 65 Plymouth Belvedere in the crosshairs, and he's itching to pull the trigger. Here we go! Good. I'm feeling really good. This is great. I watched his shoulders and I went. He whole shot at you. Lost focus, and that's all it takes. Wasn't the car's fault, I lost it. There's only four racers left in the running. Only four one hundredths of a second separates them. Willie B and Ken meet back at the pairings board to square up the all out four. The winners of these next two dead even races will earn a spot in the final and a thousand dollars cash. So is that what you want to do? You want to put the Roadrunner and get oh, some Mustang? You know what? And so you know what? We got your Roadrunner to dispose of now. Be a good matchup then. I think All so. Right. I'm ready for it. All right. Put you and a kid here, Jason, together in because you know what? Because you guys have been the most vicious on the arm drop. The second Richard's flinch, you guys have been out through the race. Well, I'm trying. Trying to do he moves, I move. All right, Jason, Don, great job so far. You just took $750 cash out of my hand. But the big race is right now, because now you're going to be racing for a spot in the finals, and that's where you have a chance of $10,000. What are your plans, Jason, to take out and be a Mopar killer tonight? I'm going to beat him on the tree. That's the way you got to do it. Jason, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this race. Don, are you concerned about the Ford? Nah, like you said, you're going to be a Mopar killer. They say about Ford, you spell them backwards, driver returns on foot. <laughs> Shake hands, let's race, and double time to your cars, boys. You got a tough competitor on your line. I hear that. Let's see it. Thanks. All right. Yeah, can you handle this Mustang? Yeah, I'll take the pump. Big, big block Mopar, small block Ford. You got this right? Yeah. Jason Winchester will have to bring to bear all his youth and quick wits behind the wheel of his equally young 91 Mustang if he has any hope of defeating Donald Schilt's lifetime of experience in the tested and tuned perfection of his 68 Roadrunner. They're motoring for their spot in the all-out final and a not-so-easy $1,000 cash. line was separated by 7.1 inches. I think I got him off the tree and same same thing happened again, you know? We were right there. I thought I had him. I swore I had him, but I was I had to be Rich said it was like seven inches or something like that. I think it was closer than that. Ken and Willie B match up the last pairing of the all-out four. Belvedere and the Camaro right now. That is I want my nasty final now. Race, man. I gotta tell you, Fast Eddie. I picked the Belvedere. Load you up. It's too bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move me straight up. I picked the Camaro to win this thing. Yep, I have Chris. to take that Chevy out. Okay. There you go. Well, good luck. Eddie, 750. Chris, 750. Thank you, Great Rick. job. Fast Eddie, what do you plan on doing to earn that next round where you'll be participating in the Ultimate Pink's Hot Lap Competition? I am going to do the same thing I've been doing the last two days, focused and racing hard. Chris, what do you plan on doing, pal? Car's running real good, strong, and I'm just going to try to run my race. Shake hands, gentlemen, and good luck. Let's race. I'm going to take him out as fast as I can. That's it. Do the best I can. Oh, I'm going to tree him. Ain't no doubt him? about it. Oh, no yeah. Doubt? I got him covered. 
They're separating Willie by six one hundredths of a second. Mopar versus Chevy, baby. Let's go. Super Street Stock champ Eddie Brooks and his quick and cunning 82 Camaro is looking to outpace the brute force brawn of Chris Baum's 65 Belvedere. It's Mopar, it's Chevy. Coming up, a little leaking fluid may cost one racer big. There's tire right through it. He went through his own oil. Oh, yeah, dude. Who, whose oil is it? Who's, who's dripping? And later, it's the Maple Grove Pink's All Out Final. And if you think you've got the winner pegged, think again. Pink's All Out is at Maple Grove Raceway, shattering the serene silence of Moton, Pennsylvania's Timberland countryside. It's the second and final race of the All Out Four. Super Street champ Eddie Brooks and his fast as lightning 82 Camaro is raring to outrun the brute force brawn of Chris Baum's 65 Belvedere, secure the last spot in the All Out Final, and pocket a solid grand. going to be a Ford Chevy showdown in Maple Grove. Got out on him, held him out, ran it out the back door. I think he got me on the tree. I think I caught him right at the eighth mile, and then he pulled away. Nearly 500 racers ventured to Maple Grove Raceway with dreams of exiting the Woodlands $10,000 richer. But after a rash of breakdowns, a jump in the 32-car runoff, and he rolled in deep and turned both bulbs off. A controversial call in the all-out 16. He moved. A near crash in the all-out 8. Oh. And a dead even spread in the all-out 4. The stars are aligning for a truly epic Pink's all-out final. A best two out of three hot lap matchup for $10,000 cash. $1,000 added to you, Jason, $1,000 to you. This is how a hot lap competition works. You have to stay in your car. If you get out of your car, you're disqualified, you're going home. Okay, gentlemen, it's a Ford, it's a Chevy, Jason Fast Eddie, shake hands, boys, and let's race for $10,000. We're good to go. I'm just uh, gonna hot lap it and just put the Ford down. That's it, end of story. How you feeling? Ah, uh, still good. Still you good, good. still yeah, focused? I'm in the game. Let's see the burnout, boys. It's Chevy, it's Ford, here we go! I know he's good under pressure. I got a lot of confidence in him. He's on his game, he'll leave that Mustang there. There's your Chevy. And the winner of race number one, here comes Jason representing Ford. Here we go, boys. Let's see the burnout. Come on. Jason and Eddie swap lanes for race two of the Pink's All Out Final. The Maple Grove Raceway track crew finds a very good reason why Jason slipped out of the groove. Who's, whose oil is it? Who's, who's dripping? The Mustang. There's tire right through it. He went through his own oil. Oh, yeah, dude. If he's dripping, he could have catastrophic failure that will send the Mustang home and the victory will go to Chevy. We don't know. His tire went through his own oil. That's why he headed to the wall. All right. So it's spraying something. Look at it real fast, figure it out. 
Jason's crew rushes to find the source of the problem, only to discover it's not leaking oil, it's leaking brake fluid. I'm done. My pedal goes right to the floor, my brake pedal. Hey, hey, he's done. When I went to slow down, pedal went all the way to the floor. I'm like, uh, he said his brakes go all the way to the floor. What it may have been was brake fluid instead. So he's right. done. He so said he's done. He's got to make a pass. If he finishes, goes to the finish line, the Chevy's going to win, but he's got to get to the finish line. He's done. It's yours. Go up there. Let his arms drop. Drive on down. All right. All the Chevy has to do is not jump my arm drop. Yeah, Coming up. It's a pink's all out first, and $10,000 hangs in the balance. OK, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be experiencing history. My decision is? Pink's all out is at Maple Grove Raceway. It's down to the third race of what can only be described as a pinks all out final no one could have predicted. The scores are tied. The first race went to young Jason Winchester's 91 Mustang. The second was won by Eddie Brooks' 82 Camaro after leaking brake fluid almost put Jason into the wall. The Mustang's loss of brake fluid has earned Jason a full disqualification due to catastrophic failure. It got real squirrely on the last pass because of the brakes and a little fluid on the tires and the car will go everywhere. Leaving Eddie with $10,000 in easy reach. All Eddie has to do is make it down the track without jumping Rich's arm drop. And the money is all his. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be experiencing history. My decision is it's a double disqualification, catastrophic failure, and a jump on the arm drop. Unfortunately, when I went up to make the buy run, one switch was still left off for the trans brake. When I went to stage the car, I rolled the beams. It was mine to lose. It happens that way sometimes. But the 10 grand remains unclaimed. So in a never before seen move, Rich pulls the most generous second chance in the history of Pink's All Out. Are the Mopars here? Chris and Don, if you're still here, you have 90 seconds to get to the line. They can't continue, I heard. So they just called us the Mopars back to go. It's Christmas in Pennsylvania. I'm ready to go. I wasn't going home, so the fat lady sings. It's one and done. The 2010 Maple Grove Raceway Pink's All Out Final has just become a real clash of the titans. Two mega Mopars granted one shot at driving home with $10,000 cash. Chris Baum's behemoth 65 Belvedere against Donald Schilt's ripped and rugged 68 Roadrunner. Oh, man, I want to race. Let's get Chris in the Mopar Final. Let's get this done. Here we go for $10,000. Let's do the burnouts. Let's go. Come on. One race. This is it. Go. Go. Out final, one of the craziest that we've ever had. Matter of fact, historic in every single aspect of what we do here on Pink Solo. But to make this official, Jason, would you then admit that you had catastrophic failure and you could not go down the track anymore? Yes. Eddie, what happened? I rolled through the beams. I asked if the Mopars were still on the premise. Don, you were on premise. Chris, you were on premise. Were your cars getting trailered? Were they getting. We parked them right here and came back to watch. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love the show. That is nuts. I didn't know that, Ken. I did not know that. And I think you're going to remember this night maybe for the rest of your lives. Shake hands. Don. Awesome race. It's my pleasure, my huge honor to award you $10,000 cash and the Pink All Out Championship. Oh, oh, thank oh, you. Hey, good job. And so you can remember this forever. Please take this trophy, declaring you Pink All Out Champion 2010, Maple Grove. The most exciting racing guys I've seen yeah. ever. Donald Schilt's glorious comeback from elimination brings one long and unforgettable day to an end. Don's good-natured sportsmanship triumphed over a plague of mechanical breakdowns and racer meltdowns. When he got his second chance, he calmly strapped himself in, slapped on his winning smile, and went on to win it all. I just won $10,000 pink soil out Maple Grove. Yeah!